Now, I've been leading teams for over two decades now different sizes, different industries, different locations. And over the years, I've learned a few secrets about how to build high performing teams. And in this video, I'll share five tips which will help you transform your team into a high performing team. So let's get started with the first one. So there's a huge issue today, which is impacting teams, groups, organizations, that's known as silos. And the first step is to break the silo. Now, how do we break the silo? Or what is working in silo? A classic example is someone in your team is working on something that you are not aware of. And that's going to impact you. That is a classic example. Being out of sync or working solo can be defined as working in silos. Now, this is one part. The other part is that's not my job. This statement, this statement, this attitude has to be removed from the team. Everyone needs to look at the bigger picture. Everyone needs to understand what's going on in the other teams, how they can work together as one cohesive unit. So promote the we culture, not the us versus them culture. So be it sales and marketing team or operations and engineering team or production and service teams. Everyone should work together as one group. They should have regular meetings where they can discuss what is going on, how the other team can help them, how they can make life easier for them, how they can be more efficient. So these collaborative meetings are certainly going to help work as one unit. The aim the target, the goal should be a common goal and everyone has to do their bit to get there. Tip number two, create a safe environment. Now, as a leader, it's your job to create a culture where people are open to speak their mind. They can share their opinion without any fear. Now, in a lot of organizations, people hesitate to speak in front of their bosses. If there is a bad news or if there is a failure or if something goes wrong, they kind of are not very comfortable talking about it in front of their boss. They say everything is good. You know, they fear that it might backfire. We don't need that kind of a culture. We need a culture where people can stand up and say what is wrong and how it can be fixed. We talk about the challenges openly and we seek for help. We look at which department or which team can help solve that problem as if they are working together as one unit. So as a leader, it's your job to create that environment where everyone helps each other. This will also help you understand and solve the issues, the problems. It will create an environment where people take ownership and accountability for their actions. And as a leader, be there for your people. Ask them how they feel genuinely. Proactively check if they need your support. That will go a long way. That will be a game changer. Tip number three is communicate. Now this beautiful quote by George Bernard Shaw explains everything. The single biggest problem in communication is the illusion that it has taken place. But there are multiple occasions where people say, hey, I wasn't aware, I didn't know. We were never shown that. This hurts the business. It pulls down the performance of the team. There are so many errors, so many mistakes, so many escalations, which are caused by lack of communication. So I say you over communicate. You share all the important updates again and again. Over communication is much better than not communicating. Do not assume that people know about it. As a leader, it's your job to create multiple channels of communication so that these important updates are not missed out. Now, what can work is having daily huddles where the team updates everyone on what's going on. What is the progress? What are the challenges? What are the risks? What is the support that they need? 
this will have everyone looped in and everyone will be on the same page. And if daily huddles don't work, you can try twice a week or maybe once a week. Decide on how you're going to do it. Now, in the hybrid world, you can do a virtual meeting. This is very important as it can connect everyone together and everyone will be aware of what's going on. It's also important to promote offline conversations. You know, the water cooler conversations, the unorganized chats where it, a lot of ideas come through, a lot of challenges, problems, discussions come through. The fourth one is create a culture of learning. Now, out of the eight hour, nine hour shift, ensure that maybe one hour is dedicated towards training, towards learning, towards self-development of the team. It can be learning a new skill. It can be learning a new task. It can be getting cross-trained on another task, right? It's very important for us as leaders to keep upskilling and reskilling our people. Coaching, grooming, creating a career path for them is one of our key responsibilities. And this will keep your team also motivated. The goal is to have lifelong learners in the team where they never stop learning. They are always eager, excited to learn something new and contribute towards the team. And lastly, the fifth one, take risks. Create that culture where people share ideas, people think out of the box, people challenge the existing systems and they give ideas which are breakthrough ideas which can reinvent the whole process, which can optimize and make the process efficient. Now what happens is whenever someone gives an idea, there's the age old statement, right? This won't work. We don't need to do that. We need to encourage people to give ideas by saying, okay, let's try that out. What's important as a leader is to give them the flexibility or empower them to make mistakes and to learn from mistakes, to fail and fail faster. So the, the idea should be that either they win or they learn. And here are two bonus tips. The first one, create a culture where people just pick up the phone and speak to each other rather than drafting and sending long emails. Trust me, that's the fastest and the best way to solve a problem. Pick up the phone and speak. The second one is to celebrate. Celebrate the wins. Go out with your team. Don't just work. Have fun too. Shake a leg. I hope these tips help you create a culture which promotes building high-performing teams. All the very best. And if you like this video, then do consider subscribing to my channel so that you don't miss your weekly dose of motivation. Thank you so much for watching.